This episode is brought to you by Bumble. Who says Valentine's Day is just for couples? Just because you're not in a relationship doesn't mean you can't get out there and live your best love life. That's where Bumble comes in. This February 14th, you can flip the script and give those relationshipers a friendly dose of FOMO. Say no to staying in this Valentine's Day and yes to more. More dates, more first kisses, more gossip for the group chat girlies. Do Valentine's your way. Date now on Bumble. This is Optimal Relationships Daily, episode 2055. How can I be sure that he's the right one? By Evan Mark Katz of evanmarkkatz.com. Hello, everybody, and thank you so much for joining another episode of ORD. I'm Greg Audino, your host and narrator. Excited to be back with you once again, this time for a post from an author we've been reading from since just about the beginning, dating coach Evan Mark Katz. Once again, we'll be reading from one of his Q&As today, so I will read his reader's question first and then get into his response. Let's get to it as we optimize your life. How Can I Be Sure That He's the Right One? by Evan Mark Katz of evanmarkkatz.com Evan, how would I know if my doubts about my boyfriend and my future with him are a search for perfection or are reasons for legitimate concern? I've read the Marry Him book, and I agree that a man's limitations are simply human flaws we all have. But then, I would come across articles saying I should not ignore my doubts, and having doubts is a predictor of a high divorce rate. I did a very honest evaluation of my boyfriend's pluses and minuses. We've been together for close to two years. And I still don't know if I should be with him in the long run. He has great qualities. He is a man of integrity. He's loving, affectionate, devoted, generous in his heart and with his actions. Honest. However, I am afraid that the things that irritate me, his mood swings, insecurities, social ineptness, and trust issues, will be the ones to break us apart in the future. How do you know what the deal breakers are? Stephanie. Stephanie, I can't tell you what you should do. I don't know you. I don't know your boyfriend. I don't know how happy you are. I don't know about your communication, values, and conflict resolution. So, all I'll say to you is that your boyfriend of two years is the kind of man you should consider marrying. Loving, affectionate, devoted, generous, honest. But just because someone is all of those things doesn't mean you necessarily marry him. Marriage isn't simply about loyalty and stability. It's about a personal connection as well. And that is something that gets lost when people cite marry him and misinterpret my character over chemistry mantra. So let me keep it really simple for you. You can have all the chemistry, passion, and common interests in the world, and it doesn't matter if you fight all the time, You don't feel the same about monogamy or children. You have wildly different views on money or religion. Or if one party lacks in character and is willing to lie, cheat, steal, or defy the other party instead of compromising and communicating. This is what I mean by choosing values over chemistry. Chemistry can't redeem a broken relationship. All it can do is provide fuel, in the form of attraction, that irrationally erases your doubts even when those doubts should be there. On the other hand, you don't marry a nice, honest guy simply because he's nice and honest. You'd better make each other laugh, enjoy each other's company, and work hard to please each other in bed. This very basic personal chemistry is a must. And frankly, I don't know how people suffer for two years with boyfriends who don't make them laugh, whose company they don't enjoy, and who give them absolutely no spark in bed. No one told you to date this guy for so long. Why on earth you'd marry him is beyond me. As for the article you cited, it's a little misleading, and you've honestly misinterpreted its findings to suit your narrative. First of all, the study was done on couples whose average age was 27 for men and 25 for women. What does that tell you? It tells me that the research was done on kids with less than five years of life experience who are not established in their career who have not necessarily dated or slept around much, who don't know much about anything in life. Doubt me? How much did you know about life at 25? Compare that to 30, 35, 40. Fact. 75% of marriages where both parties are under 25 end in divorce. It should be no surprise. These are mostly kids playing house and hoping to get it right. 
Sometimes they do, more often they don't. Next, there's nothing surprising about this study, except for the framing of the information. People who have doubts are more likely to get divorced? Is a headline like clouds are really good predictors of rain? Duh. What that headline ignores is this. 1. 6% of couples get divorced when neither husband nor wife had doubts. Just goes to show how much you just know when you're signing on the dotted line for life. 2. There was a 10% divorce rate when only men had doubts, an 18% divorce rate when only women had doubts, and a 20% divorce rate when both had doubts. Put another way, 3. There was a 90% success rate when men had doubts, an 82% success rate when women had doubts, and an 80% success rate even when both parties had doubts about their relationship. Sorry, y'all, but smart people, mature people, and critical thinkers are all going to have reasonable doubts about such a profound and weighty decision. Choices are rarely black and white. Relationships are all gray. And if you're not thinking in gray, if you don't have any doubts, I'd submit to you that you're probably not thinking very clearly. So I can't tell you what to do, Stephanie, but you must know that having doubts is not a sign, per se, that the relationship is broken. It means you have a lot of information to process before making such a decision, and that you're going to have to trust your brain and your gut in determining whether what's lasted for two years should also last forever. For me, I didn't know it was right, but I did know that I had an amazing 16 months with my girlfriend, and that I'd be pretty stupid if I gave that up for the pursuit of something better. You just listened to the post titled, How Can I Be Sure That He's the Right One? by Evan Mark Katz of evanmarkkatz.com. And be sure to stay for my commentary right after this. This episode is brought to you by Bumble. Who says Valentine's Day is just for couples? Just because you're not in a relationship doesn't mean you can't get out there and live your best love life. That's where Bumble comes in. This February 14th, you can flip the script and give those relationshipers a friendly dose of FOMO. Say no to staying in this Valentine's Day and yes to more. More dates, more first kisses, more gossip for the group chat girlies. Do Valentine's your way. Date now on Bumble. Now, there's a lot of talk about New Year's resolutions right now, and most of them revolve around either a healthier lifestyle or freeing up some time for ourselves. Why not both? Get started on your resolutions with Factor, so you're ready for the new year. Factor's ready-to-eat meal delivery takes the stress out of meal planning and sets you up for success in the new year. Skip the grocery stores, prep work, and cooking fatigue. Instead, get chef-crafted, dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. With over 35 meals to choose from per week, including options like keto, calorie smart, vegan and veggie, and more, plus over 55 weekly add-ons, You'll have a ton of nutritious and flavorful options to kickstart your resolutions. And what I really like is that when things get hectic, Factor is flexible. Change your order up every week with plans from 4 to 18 meals per week, or pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. So head to factormeals.com slash optimal50, that's optimal50, and use code optimal50 to get 50% off. That's code optimal50 at factormeals.com slash optimal50 to get 50% off. And thank you so much to Evan for sharing his Q&A today. I think he's right about looking for values and chemistry in a relationship. But there is another important part to think about, and that is growing together, right? Stephanie's doubts about her boyfriend's mood swings and other issues, they might not just be about his flaws, but also a chance for both of them to grow. It's important to see if these problems are things her boyfriend is trying to improve or if they're just part of who he is. And Stephanie should also think about how she feels about these traits. Are they really deal breakers? Or can they work through them together? Sometimes facing challenges as a team can make a relationship much stronger. So in short, I think doubts in a relationship don't always mean it's bad. And it seems like Evan feels the same. They can be signs of areas where both people can help each other get better. So choosing a partner isn't just about finding someone who checks all the boxes. You know, it's also about being a good partner yourself and growing with each other. This way of thinking adds a lot more to consider when deciding about relationships, where working on challenges together is as important as having things in common and enjoying each other's company. But with that, it is time to get going for today, everybody. Thank you so much for staying until the end and supporting the show. 
I hope you had some great takeaways, a new way of interpreting some of the struggles you might have with your partner. And as always, I do hope you'll come back and join us again tomorrow for another post. That's where your optimal life awaits.